Okay, everybody. Today we're looking at the resistance required practical. Now there's a couple of different versions of this, so I'll be highlighting those differences as we go through. To start off, um, I suggest always to have a little do now task, so something to get us thinking, um, test our recall of facts before we make a start. So have a go at these questions. Pause now and try them if you haven't already done so. Just so you can check your answers against those then. Again, pause these. I'm not going to go through all of these here because it's not the purpose of this video, but it's a good little bit of practice. Moving on then. So looking at this resistance required practical, the first thing I'm going to do is go through some um, some key information which I'd like you to just follow through as I'm going through here. Then we're going to have a look at a question together and then I'm going to leave one for you to have a go at. So the I do section and this is me going through these. The first thing we need to know is how to measure current and potential difference. So these two terms here are absolutely crucial. You can't really measure resistance directly in this practical. There are ways of measuring resistance, but it doesn't work for small resistances like this. So you need to know that you measure current with an ammeter, okay? Um, and that ammeter needs to be placed in series. That's just going to count how many charges go past it every second. So it needs to be placed within the loop of the circuit. You need to measure potential difference with a voltmeter. OK, um, now a voltmeter measures potential difference. It needs to be placed in parallel. The reason for that is because if you think about that term potential difference, there's a word difference in there. So the voltmeter, voltmeter needs to connect to a circuit in two different places. It can say what is the potential at this place? Then it will say what is the potential at this place? And once it's got those two bits of information, it can tell you the difference in the potential. So that's why the voltmeter has to go in parallel. Now, <clears throat> how to then calculate resistance? Well, we are measuring current and we're measuring potential difference. And we're going to be using an equation from the equation sheet. Now, this equation here is in the equation sheet. It appears like this in the equation sheet. V equals IR. OK, potential difference equals current times resistance. So if I just put some easy numbers in here, for example, and I said I had 20 volts and 5 amps, the way we like to work these um, calculations out is always to put the numbers in under the letters. So my 20 volts, we're going to substitute in before we do the rearranging, equals 5 amps times by resistance. The reason we substitute in first is because that gets us a mark automatically. Now I'm going to rearrange it and I'm going to say 20 over 5 equals R, which in this case would be 4. And the unit for resistance is ohms. So to calculate resistance, we do potential difference divided by current. But if you can't remember how to rearrange it in a written question, you could just say use this equation and you are likely to get credit for that even if it's not quite as good as writing the rearranged version. Finally, in this investigation, we need to know what our variables are. Now, there's two different circuit diagrams here. One of them has got a ruler with a wire attached to it, and one of them's got three, three resistors here in series. So your independent variable could be the length of a wire, or it could be the number of resistors. Now, they could be placed in series or parallel, but ultimately you could investigate what is the resistance of one resistor, two resistors, three resistors, four resistors, all placed in a line. Um, or you could measure what's the resistance of 10 centimetres, 20 centimetres, 30 centimetres of a wire. OK, obviously, if you're just doing numbers of resistors, you, you count how many resistors you've got there. If you're doing the length of a wire, you need a ruler to measure that. Your dependent variable is going to be the resistance. And control variables are not often asked about um, too much within this, but a control variable in this investigation is usually going to be the temperature of the wire. Um, in particular for the, uh, the length of a wire experiment, because a wire that gets hot 
it will change its resistance. So keeping the temperature constant is going to be a good control variable here. Okay. Um, that's going to be that's going to be the best answer really in general for your control variables. Okay. But if you're looking at the res the numbers of resistors, I would probably suggest making sure each resistor has the same resistance. So now let's look at a past paper question that we'll go through together. <clears throat> so, um. Again, you can pause at any point here and have a go at these, but I'm going to go through this with you. So a student investigated how the resistance, so how the resistance of a piece of wire varies with length. Straight away, I'm, I'm thinking here what my um, variables are. This is going to be my independent variable and this is going to be my dependent variable because it's, I'm changing the length and seeing what happens to resistance. Complete figure one by adding an ammeter and a voltmeter. Well, for three marks here, guys, for three marks, we just need to put two things on. So first of all, we're going to add an ammeter, which we know from the question from the uh, slide before is going to go in series. So I'm going to place my ammeter in series. It could have gone anywhere on that loop. It doesn't matter that it's on the left, the right, the top, the bottom, anywhere on that loop. And the voltmeter is going to go in parallel. OK, three marks here. You've got one mark for each of those symbols and one mark for getting them in the right place the easiest three marks you're ever going to get. <clears throat> now, the next question of this, um, this is the question up here, the next part. It's a six mark of this next section. It says, describe how the student would obtain the data needed for the investigation. Your answer should include a risk assessment for one hazard in the investigation. So we've already said that we've got an ammeter here and we've got a voltmeter here. Now, in general, these um, questions where it's asking you a experiment where you've got some variables. So as opposed to say the density one where you just need to measure something and calculate a value, we've got variables here. Now, in these investigations, you're always basically going to follow these set of questions that I've put in red and blue here. Now, I've, the reason I've separated them is because these questions here if you answer those three questions, you are going to basically have enough for a level two answer. That's going to be a four marks out of six answer. So let three or four marks. If you can add the extra stuff that I'm going to add here at the bottom, this is going to get you a level three answer. So this is going to get you five or six marks. Um, and absolutely, yes, you can answer these in bullet points. In fact, as uh, someone marking your exam will prefer you to have bullet points because it will be easier to see where those marks and where the information is available. So first of all, I'm looking at this and say, what are my independent and dependent variables? We're going to do this with any experiment. It could be um, how the concentration of something affects the rate of reaction in chemistry or anything like that. You're still going to follow this principle. So what are my independent and dependent variables? Well, I've said my independent variable is the length of wire, the thing that I am changing. So this is going to be the length of wire. My dependent variable is going to be how the resistance changes. OK, so this is the resistance. So the next thing, so if I'm writing in um, in the writing this answer, out, I'm going to say my independent variable is the length of the wire. The dependent variable is the resistance. Now I'm going to say how I measure each one of those two things. Now, with the independent, I, that's the thing I'm changing. So I also need to say how I'm varying it. So with the independent variable, um, how do I measure the length of the wire? Well, I'm going to measure the length, OK, with a ruler. Simple as that. I'm going to measure the length of the ruler and I'm going to vary it by, in this case, I will be moving a crocodile clip to a different point along that wire. OK, so I'm going to use a crocodile clip. I'm going to write shorthand here. OK, a crocodile clip. Um, on the wire and I'm going to move it and I'm going to place it at 10 centimeters 20 centimeters etc okay so I've said how I can measure my independent variable and I've said how I can vary it finally I need to say how do I measure my dependent variable now my dependent variable is resistance but as we've just said you're not directly measuring resistance we're going to measure current and we're going to measure potential difference and we're going to calculate it. So I'm going to say measure the current. So I'm going to say measure the current with the ammeter. Again, I'm just writing shorthand to save time here. I'm going to say measure the potential difference with 
a voltmeter. I don't need to say the ammeters in series and the voltmeters in pa uh, parallel here because I've already established that from my circuit diagram on the previous question. But if I hadn't done a circuit diagram, I'd be writing those sentences as well. And finally, I'm going to say resistance equals potential difference divided by current. So I've now said how I'm measuring my dependent variable. Now, what I've written there, there's not very much there, but that's basically going to get me four marks in this question. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going on to um, trying to get those extra points at the end, making sure I get that level three answer. They have asked me for um, a risk assessment of one hazard. Now, in this investigation, um, we'll do the control variable first. I've mentioned this already. The control variable, a uh, good one here, would be the temperature of the wire. Now, the way you would um, control this would be to try and keep the current low so the wire doesn't get hot. But the next question actually asks about that. The hazard here um, is that, again, the wire could get hot. OK, so it's the heat of the wire. OK, so the wire could get hot. Um, so it could cause a burn or it could melt the wire. And the way in which we reduce it is you use low currents. If you use a low current, so a low voltage will give a low potential difference will give you a low current um, and that will prevent the wire from getting too hot. And then the extras here. So you can say things like repeat your um, repeat your measurements and take averages and you can display your results on a graph. In this case, it will be a line graph because your independent variable length is a continuous variable. OK. If you put all of that into bullet points, you're going to get all of the marks. But it's about structuring your answer and not just starting out by just writing the first thing that comes into your head. OK. The second uh, or the final two parts of this question were um, these two here. So the first one, why would switching off the circuit between readings have improved the accuracy of the student's results? Um, and this one, you can look through those answers and have a go yourself. But as I said here, the reason why switching off will improve the accuracy is that the temperature of the wire would not change. OK, so what you're allowing is you're basically allowing the wire to not get too hot. Uh, and as we said, a control variable for this investigation is the temperature of the wire. The next one says that the student used the crocodile clip. So this is what the student did. They used the crocodile clip. OK, a better way of doing this investigation is to use this thing called a jockey, which is basically like um, a, a point of a pen almost where you can just point at an exact point on the wire. How would using the jockey have affected the accuracy and resolution of the student's results compared to using a crocodile clip. So the accuracy is going to be better. The accuracy is going to be higher. This is basically because um, you don't really know whether the current in a wire is going to get to the near edge or whether it's going to get all the way through that. You don't know exactly where the current is going to get to before it's going to go up that crocodile clip. So it allows you with the jockey to know exactly where you've placed that um, exactly where you've placed that connection on the wire. The resolution, OK, would be higher as well. The resolution would be improved. The resolution is the smallest interval you can measure between. So in this case, I can't really say that my measurement is any more than within about two or three millimeter uh, millimeters, whereas here with the jockey, I can pretty much say to the nearest millimeter where I am placing um, where I'm placing that jockey. So it would improve the accuracy, it would improve the resolution there. So finally, this is the you do section. So what I would suggest is pause the video here and have a go at these questions. This would, I know these uh, don't quite add up to six marks here, but um, this would basically be a six mark question um, after you add the uh, the amateur and the voltmeter for the first section. The question two would be about a six mark question. Um, and what I've done here is I've broken it down so that you can try and answer that six mark question a little bit at a time. So I would pause the video here and in a few seconds, I'm going to switch over to the next slide, which has got the answers that we want to um, to be including. 
So here are the answers for the second part. I've not added onto, uh, typed in the, the drawing at the top. So for the top, you're going to add your ammeter, which could be anywhere within the same loop. Okay, so again, I'm going to place it here on the left, but it could have gone on the right or the top, etc. And the voltmeter needs to be around the two resistors. If I want to measure the resistance of, the, of both of those resistors, I need to measure the potential difference across both of those resistors. Um, and yeah, you can read through those remaining answers for question two there. Okay, good luck with these, um, these sorts of questions. The skill for measuring current and potential difference, it's the same skill if you get the other electricity required practical, which is IV characteristics, um, the independent variable changes, but your, method, your, your technical skills are the same. And those skills for looking at independent, dependent variables, control variables, how you change them, how you measure them, that is the same for almost all of the science practicals. Good luck, guys, and well done.